Hey, Taylor, guess what? What up? I am turning 30 in two days from when this oh, comes out. That's right. You're old. Yeah. Basically, the end of my life. I am turning 30 in like seven years from when this comes out. I don't know how these come out. <laughs> these these go back in the future. Back in the future? Yeah, back, I assume back in the past. these are coming out in 2011. Yes. Okay, so I'm right. Yep. Um, But that's not really that important. So you said you saw The Quiet Place this week, right? I sure did. What did you think? It was good. Yeah. It was interesting. Um, but here's the thing. Yes. I don't know if I got the full theater experience of this movie because we went to a brand new theater that just opened up here. Oh, yeah. I heard about that. Studio Movie Grill. Yeah. It's, it's like a movie theater, bar, restaurant. Blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. It's, so we're like, okay, we'll try it. And it, it's it's one of the theaters that is you can go to with the movie pass. Yes. And it's only like two minutes from our house, so you don't have to drive across town. So we uh, we go to this movie. It's like nine thirty at night, and it's the each everyone has like their own individual seat. That like reclines and it's got like a tray for food in front of you with the drink holder. I feel like reclining and, like, and trays don't really go very well together. Well, not okay. Let me rephrase. It's it's not really more of a recline, but it's got the part where you can put your feet up. Oh, okay. Like a recliner does, but it, it you can't really like lean back. Gotcha. But it goes back a little bit. It's comfortable, and it, it's it's. I mean, each theater probably, if I had to guess, I'd say maybe can hold a hundred people. Uh-huh. As opposed to, I don't know, maybe 200 in a normal theater. Yeah. So, and it, it's spacious. You don't got to worry about people like sitting in front of you uh-huh. or putting their feet up on your seat. Yep. You're really building this story up. Oh, yeah. No, don't be excited. <laughs> it's not a great. I'm just, look, I, we're, we're sponsored by Studio Movie Grill now. Oh, so okay. I have to pitch. <laughs> okay. You got to paint the full hey, okay. experience. Got it. But but one of the things that they offer is like food and drink service. Yeah. To your seat, right? They have like a call button, and you can come and they. You it's basically like all this stuff. Watching a movie on an airplane. Yeah, pretty much. Probably a little more comfortable, but that's the gist of it. Well, I always fly first class. <laughs> oh, that's right. I, I I do remember you saying you make your kids ride in the back. Yeah. With with Sam, I. <laughs> I have a feeling that not every time is going to be like this. Yeah. But because it's new, everyone wants to, to like the full experience, right? Yeah. So this whole movie, you've got like probably five to six different like employees back and forth, back oh, and forth. Oh, really? That food. That's drinks. like the worst movie for that to happen too. It, it, and that's I said exactly because like if this was I, I was telling Chris if this was any other movie it probably wouldn't even really be that distracting like they're good about it you know they're not loud yeah and but but it, it's happening they're going back and forth a lot <laughs> especially because so we went with my brother uh, I don't know if you know Joshua uh boo I don't know if he ordered like fifty different items <laughs> but the dude was back and forth to his seat. <laughs> Over and over and over again. I and would said, not be time, shocked if he ordered 50 different things. <laughs> he was sitting uh, on the other side of Crystal, and he said, every time the dude came in to talk to Joshua, he sat like in front of her. <laughs> Just sat on her lap? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it was any other movie, yeah. it probably wouldn't be that distracting. But the fact that it's such a quiet movie, and like it relies on being really quiet, and then like you know real loud Real bursts, stressful, yeah. It was like I, 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 like I said, I don't think we got the full experience out of it. <laughs> I don't think you did. I, I got to imagine but that's got to be one of the worst pizza. ways. Okay, how's the pizza? So, it was oh, man, it was good. <laughs> it was some good pizza. I will give them that. Um. So yeah, it probably not the best movie for that, but whatever. What did you think about yeah. the movie? I did like the movie. Um, 
I, I don't know if I like the fact that they don't do any explaining whatsoever of the world. Yeah. So, I don't. I guess I'm indifferent to that. But yeah. it was a good movie. So I liked it. I saw it in Thai. Well, it was Thai dubbed, and I went to it, and I was like, "Oh well, there's no dialogue, so that doesn't really matter." But it mattered a little bit because mm-hmm. when they spoke at the waterfall, mm-hmm. I didn't know what was going on. I mean, I I, I figured oh, it out. Right. It was pretty pretty easy to tell that he was basically just saying like. There's a lot of noise, so you're safe to make noise here. No, he was saying, you shut your mouth. You <laughs> stop it. I, I totally, Only I can make noise. <laughs> I missed that part completely. Um, but the other thing is, the sign language, all the subtitles were in Thai as well. Oh, yeah. So there was... I feel like there wasn't even really that much of that either, though. Yeah, I, I, well, I feel like I followed the movie pretty well. Like, they did a really good job acting in it. To where I could infer what was going on just based off of either the small little bit of sign language that I know or their actions afterwards. Now, do you know Thai sign language? No. And did they have the sign language dubbed in Thai? <laughs> yeah. They, it was really weird. They <laughs> they just it was like a, transposed a, a different yeah, hand over the top. <laughs> Oh man, that would be pretty funny. No, it was all American Sign Language, but uh, they just put subtitles in the Thai. Right on. But uh, yeah, I uh, I really felt like the movie should have been called Three Miles from a Loud Place." Yeah, here's here's the one complaint that I have. Well, not really complaint, just gripe with with the movie and and the characters. You first of all, how irresponsible do you need to be to be getting pregnant in this world where you no doubt are going to have a crying baby and also probably labor? I feel definitely like labor. you're just asking for, you're just asking for it. You're definitely gonna have Whatever. labor before crying baby. I won't maybe. You're, I don't you're know. You're gonna have labor. I don't know how it works. I stay <laughs> home when all that's going on. Oh, good idea. It's kind of gross. <laughs> so okay but fine you know what whatever maybe i i don't know so the way but i then, took that was they uh, were kind of replacing the first one naturally yeah that they uh, and they're like they we're kinda, gonna do better this time. <laughs> they kind of took the attitude of like we'll never really replace them but if if we get pregnant then we get pregnant type of thing yeah. Mm. So my other part to that is fine. You've made that decision. You're doing it. Yeah. Why not move to the place where you're allowed to yell? <laughs> yeah. Like well, that's... that looked mostly inhabitable. Yeah, it's not the luxury of a house, but it's also the luxury of not death. Yeah. So what is the deal with that? Yeah. Well, I. My theory, or my idea, if I was in this world, I would set up speakers that went off, uh, you know, like 500 yards away from each other, just at intervals. So, like, one goes off and it just sounds like a person talking for a second, and then it shuts off, and let them run over there, and then have another one go off somewhere else, and have another one go off somewhere else, and just have them going around in a circle, just all the time. Or going away from you. Like, yeah. It just always leading, yeah. leading them away. Why would you? There's, it just seems like it seems like making a ton of noise all the time is way more practical but, than making no make noise. Any. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. I was also thinking, why not? You can set up some kind of device right around your perimeter that, like, it's not a loud noise at first, but it slowly is a gradual, like a white noise type thing. Yeah. And then have that be louder than you and then not have to worry about it so much. Like almost make it sound like a waterfall. Yeah. Or, or that, that decibel. Or they had the uh, fireworks as a distraction type thing. Mm-hmm. Why not have 
a sound system set up because they have the light it, system. That right? does the same thing. So yeah. they had the lights. So when the lights were a certain color, it meant safe. When they were red, it meant danger. Yes. They already had all the electricity strung up all across their land. They could have also, easily set yeah. something up on electricity that would make a bunch of noise. Well, why would you set it up to where you have to light it on fire? Like fireworks were and a good idea. Blow your kid up. Yeah, fireworks are a good idea, but if you have to manually They're good do in, it, in, a, in a pinch, yeah. Yeah, you can make something that is as loud as fireworks and a lot cheaper. Yeah. More cost effective. And reusable. Yes, exactly. Just an air horn. Hmm. Or the uh, Dukes of Hazard. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that could be all done with electronics. <laughs> and it would be comical. Like, it would be like, oh, yeah, Dukes of Hazard. Remember that show? <laughs> all the time. But yeah, no, I, I thought the movie was great. I loved that they killed the little kid in the beginning because it really. Yeah set the tension at a high level because oh for sure just doing that it tells you as an audience member like no one is safe you thought this kid was so cute little kid Uh, we will so butcher him in front of you so i knew or i figured within after the first couple minutes i was like this kid's gonna get somebody killed right with this Uh toy but i thought it was gonna come back way later not like 10 seconds later (laughs) because <laughs> he because she gives him the the toy back and then he swipes the battery so obviously i'm like oh boy how's this going to play into it it's like oh well here it is it's already happening and he's dead <laughs> but uh no i thought we are going to edit this to where it just is you saying i loved that they killed the kid i'm gonna edit it so it just sounds like you say that oh <laughs> what have i done <laughs> Um, but no, yeah, I, I really, I had a really good time with this movie. I was like really yeah. engaged. The the idea the the of everything having to be quiet was really engrossing, right? Like it really sucked you in to the story because you are now having to understand what's going on beyond just exposition and dialogue. You are having right. to like figure things out by clues set in the screen and what they're doing and how they're going about. And there's like a lot of... Well, what the movie did really, really well was the torment of being a parent in this world. The idea of like building essentially a casket that you're going to put your brand new baby in to keep them quiet. Yeah, that was wild. forcing your kids to be quiet all the time. Like all that stuff was phenomenal. It was so well done. The rest of it was just like, oh, okay, it's fine. But the yeah. the tension of being a parent in this world was really, really strong. Yeah, I agree. Um, I have a question about modern day monsters, right? W- what is it about monsters slash aliens in, in movies these days that like they all have that in common like mechanical clicking sound you know yeah is that like is that based on real aliens and i just don't know Uh uh-huh or like where what what is that like why is that a a thing like if you think all the way back to like even lost right with the smoke monster or even signs they have that 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 clicking i mean i get maybe is that's their language or something like that but i feel like they all are like that um, I don't, uh, I'm just I'm just curious, like, what's the motivation behind it? Just because it's a creepy sound? Yeah, I think it's it's something that kind of sets you on edge, anyways. I think if they yeah. like, say, they gave the monsters its own language, mm-hmm. it would be more comical when you heard it. If they were just walking around like do 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 do, yeah, like I, there's it'd be really really hard. To give them some type of language that wouldn't sound like a joke. So yeah, that's... if you make them sound something that's more mechanical or more like a recognizable sound, but that's not really 
replicate it anywhere else, mm-hmm. then I think it, 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 it gives it a little bit more credibility. Yeah. <laughs> it, it could <laughs> wrong. <laughs> Um, another thing, right? So why not move to a more secure place that could potentially be soundproof? What about like like a big vault at a bank? Yeah. Or why not set up traps or a moat or yeah. trip oh, lines? That too. Or I mean, snares. we don't know limitations to these creatures. We know that they're super fast. Yeah, and, and they can't see anything. So yeah, I don't. I don't. I mean, almost just treat them like zombies, right? Anything that you would do to protect yourself from the zombies, you could potentially do here. Or why not try? I don't know. Yes. Yeah. No, for sure. Maybe they did. Maybe at at some point you're just like, you know what? We're all gonna die. I'm just gonna live in a house. Maybe I don't know. It it seemed like there was a lot of people just living in homes. Yeah. Well. Pretty much everyone that we saw. I mean, not that there's a lot of people. Um, I don't know. It's just weird choices. Yeah. Also, picking an axe over a pitchfork seemed like a huge mistake. Oh, yeah. Pitchfork, you just got to stand there. Yeah. Point. Yeah. You just have to. Because it's coming to you. You know, you don't really, <laughs> you, don't, you don't got to do much. That's a 300-mile fastball coming it. at you. You, yeah, exactly. There's no way you'd be able to time that. Well, uh, speak for yourself, but <laughs> but I've done it. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Just a lot of weird decisions. Yeah. But, but again, it's really, really good. No, it's it's great. And there's just a lot of goofy things that I think were intentionally chosen because oh, yeah. to service the movie right well, like course, if they just lived can in the waterfall imagine? the movie would yeah. be really boring <laughs> can you imagine a movie right that that sets up maybe in the very very beginning that there's these terrifying monsters that can like tear you apart and they have super senses and they can do all this this and that but they only have like one weakness right where okay they they can't see very well or whatever yeah. and then like the main characters are so smart that they plan their whole life around that weakness and then you never see the monsters <laughs> the rest of the movie because they're that good at avoiding them <laughs> and they just live their lives well I, and that's what we got. i think it's like that, a sitcom i think there's a way that you could have done it where the family is either living in the waterfall or near the waterfall or somewhere right. that's making a ton of noise that's safe. And them get trapped outside of their safe area trying not to hey. make noise. Yeah, see that 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 made, and then they have to be quiet and they're not totally used to having to do that. Yeah. And I dig that. Like I feel like that might have been a, a a it would have made more sense with yeah. all of the rules, you know, where then at least they are you know, like, it seems like they're making logical choices, but they have to yeah, go out to get supplies. And while yeah, they're out... You don't out, question why they're doing it, because they didn't do it intentionally. Yeah. Um, I do agree. But, yeah, but Quiet Place, I again, I think it's great. I think it's worth seeing if you haven't seen it. I mean, we kind of yeah, spoiled sure. a lot of it, but that's your fault. You shouldn't listen yeah, to this. Yeah, you should have seen it by now. Yeah. If you listen to a podcast about movies and the title is about a movie you haven't seen yet, that's on you. Yep. I feel like I've heard also, that. Also, I'm going to spoil a lot of movies right now. Spoiler <laughs> alert. Uh, do you want to spoil Avengers. Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, or Clue? Because that's uh, the next two movies we got coming out on our Patreon. Oh, Clue. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen it yet, but my guess is. Uh, I'm going to say Colonel Mustard, the candlestick in the library. You've never seen Clue? I've never seen it. It's like, it's a cult classic now. Is it? Yeah. Like a lot of people really like it. I think you might like it. It's, uh, I probably just dumb. It, well, I don't is think... this one, would, does this have Tim Curry in it? Yeah. 
Tim Curry is funny in such a weird way to me. So I think like, I don't know. the jokes in this, I mean, I said it in the podcast, but I'll, I'll say it again now. Uh, the jokes in the movie, I think, hold up really well because mm-hmm. the jokes are more physical based and not like a a reference to something going on at the time. So right. like there's this long scene where one guy is trying to sit down and someone takes a seat before he can sit down and he goes to the next seat, but someone else takes that and he goes from like eight different seats and ends up sitting on a table and the table breaks. And that's it. <laughs> that's like the whole scene. But it's, I'm in. I like it. <laughs> it's done like just so well. That makes sense. Uh, you weren't choking though. You were going to spoil Clue. <laughs> that, that makes sense. And the everyone in frame is doing something. They're yeah. like everyone is you like the whole screen is being used constantly, and it's not. It, it's it's really well done. I think uh, you would probably enjoy the movie. Yeah, I'm gonna have to watch that one. Well, well I mean, I will watch that one. It's gonna be on the podcast, so I should watch it. No, these are already recorded. I did this one with uh, Movie Pass Pod. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's right. We did. We I I forgot we weren't doing the board games one. Yeah, no, yeah, we canceled that. Dang it, now I'll never see Clue. Just watch it. (laughs) I can't. I don't have time. I I only have time to watch movies that I'm compelled to watch at this point. Yeah, that's how I kind of feel about this whole life of mine, too. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I don't get to just pick movies anymore. I'm going to lose the Patreon, or I'm going to win the Patreon and then make myself watch movies that I want to watch as my punishment. So you're gonna win and then no, I know yourself. it didn't make sense. All right, so we don't need to talk about it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it is coming up to the end of the month. Taylor, at the time of recording this, is one vote ahead. Uh, but it is my birthday tomorrow. If you're listening to this at the day no, when this comes out, no, don't listen to any of this. this so is, for a no. dollar, you can save no, me from Henry. having to pay the punishment. Ooh. One dollar on Patreon voted towards Alan. You can help me not have to pay the punishment again. So far, I've had my legs waxed. I've had to eat yeah. terrible jelly beans. I had to watch Basket Case. <laughs> oh, and the mustache. Oh, yeah. That was the worst of all. I had to have a mustache for an entire month. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that was the worst one? It was definitely the hardest one emotionally. Oh, for sure. And it was it was that because of the the constant ridicule from your wife and kids? Uh, well, from my wife, I got a lot of it, but I think the hardest part about it was no one else said anything. And when I saw myself, <laughs> they thought they thought you just made a choice. <laughs> yeah, when I saw myself, I felt so creepy, but no one <laughs> seemed to notice or care. They're like, "Yeah, that makes Thanks. sense. That that adds up. Your character, like, oh, you seem like a mustache I'm type of person." Didn't have a mustache. <laughs> yeah, that was the most upsetting part of well, it. Well, they seem like, well, I guess he's finally embraced it. <laughs> but yeah, so patreon.com slash I seen that. Vote for Alan for a dollar. You can save me. I really don't have to pay the punishment again. Taylor has only done it once, and it was the best moment of my life watching him eat that chili pepper. Oh, man. I just read, too, uh, like a week or so ago, one dude ate the pepper and had to be hospitalized. (laughs) Like, it it like closed up his his airway, and then they spoke to the the Met, and I don't know if manufacturer is the right word, but whoever sold the peppers, they're like, well, yeah, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to, like, cook with it. This guy doesn't know what he's doing, so I don't care. Well, it's a shame that didn't happen to you. I know, right? <laughs> we would have made for a much better story. <laughs> but yeah, so we will be back um, in a couple of days with our next episodes. And uh, Look, don't vote for Alan because I already have another movie picked out and it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> Follow us on Twitter, I Seen That Pod. Like us on Facebook, I Seen That. And we will be back soon. Yeah, yeah.